thank you for taking time out of your uh, your day uh, to come learn um, more about uh, adaptive cards for Microsoft Teams. More importantly, getting started with them. Um, and I'll be showcasing Microsoft Lists and Power Automate along the way. Uh, my name is Norm Young. I'm a uh, Microsoft MVP in the Office Apps and Services category, which essentially means uh, SharePoint. That was uh, or is my focus area. Um, I'm coming to you from a very cold Canadian day, although it's a bit sunny. Um, about 15 minutes from Niagara Falls and an hour away from Toronto to give you an idea of of where I'm coming today. Uh, I have been to Philly on uh, one occasion in my youth and had a great time, so I'm quite happy to be here today. And uh, one of the things that I, I really hope that you can take from this session is that you will understand that despite some of your initial feelings about adaptive cards and the code that's required to create them, that this is very much a, a an approachable and uh, feasible thing for you to include in some of your processes and solutions. My background is not development. Uh, I'm a former data professional who's come to uh, SharePoint and the Power Platform in, in recent years. So um, some of the code that you might see, I would never in a million years write this type of stuff or pretend to be an expert at it. So I hope that someone like myself can try and show you that the barriers to using adaptive cards isn't as high as you may have thought. And so, you know, what are the basics around adaptive cards? Um, there is a, uh, uh, a write-up that uh, someone did uh, about this that I quite like, and it says that adaptive cards are a platform agnostic method of sharing and displaying blocks of information with the, without the complexity of customizing CSS or HTML to enter them. You author adaptive cards in JSON format with integrations that cloud apps and services can openly exchange. When delivered to a specific host, such as Microsoft Teams, the, the JSON is transformed into the native UI that automatically adapts to its host. Therefore, the process designers can now offer a consistent UI pattern whenever they need to display information as part of the business process and automation. Now, that's, that's the snippet I just read in. I'll, I'll provide the link to where that is listed. But what you're really getting are these containers, these small little user interfaces of information that uh, you can write once or, or configure once and use them across different platforms, whether it's email, Teams, Cortana, and even Viva. So it's a really nice way to, to build something once and repurpose it elsewhere. And then we can also have actions, and this is the, the great thing about adaptive cards, and it's the thing that drew me to it. Um, I can have something like open a link into a Microsoft List or uh, do something with Power Automate when a user clicks the button. And the thing that I hope you understand is that it, it might be authored in, in JSON or JSON, but it is not limited to developers. And where would you use adaptive cards? You've probably interacted the, with them through a, a bot framework or some other type of thing. But if you're considering adaptive cards in the context of Microsoft 365, some of the things that you could consider are using it as a way to distribute targeted news that you might have in your SharePoint online uh, intranet. You might want to include it as part of a task management uh, extended functionality from planner. So if you assign a task to someone, um, you can deliver that through uh, the adaptive card, but also allow them to take action without having to context switch out of Teams. And this is going to be one of the, the powerful things about delivering work to Teams. Our hub for teamwork is staying in that context. You can also do things like document approvals. 
send the notice to the user, let them open, let them approve, let them reject all within Teams. Or if you're just gathering user input, you know, maybe you're doing a poll, maybe you're getting them to sign up for some type of training. You can do this all. And these example images are things that I created inside of a half hour to an hour using demo data. So literally, and I don't mean to sound self-deprecating, but um, if I can do it, most people should be able to, to take this on as well. And so what is the, the structure of an adaptive card? Um, you can see this image of Ninja Cat and the box on the outside is literally the card. And that is the, the type. This is an adaptive card. We see a version. It's that root object that will contain everything that's inside. And there's also this, this concept of being spoken. Um, and this is a, an accessibility feature that will read the context for our users that depend on those uh, accessibility services. And there's also something called the schema. And the schema is what version of that adaptive cards schema is going to be required to render it and make it work properly. Um, and we'll see with teams that we will probably have to have a, a, a less than most current version of that schema to make things work. And then we have the body. The body, number two, that's everything kind of inside of these lines. And we have elements. We see a, a text label, if you will. We see an image and we see a button. Um, and these are these are elements and they make up the building blocks of the card. So you can do multiple things with them. It doesn't always just have to be a text or a button or a link. There's quite a bit that you can do. And then finally, I, I was talking about the button. There's actions. Um, they can uh, open an item. They can submit feedback back to a calling process. And it looks very simplified, the, the payload that we're seeing on the screen. But the more complex this is, the harder it is to, to uh, imagine writing. So for me, as someone who's not a developer, uh, the payload can be quite intimidating. This is a very basic payload. Um, they can get quite complicated, and, and we'll see some of that in uh, later in our demos. Uh, the thing that makes the barrier to adaptive cards so much lower than writing the JSON is the adaptive cards designer. And this is a website that we'll show shortly in the demo, and it, it allows you to uh, configure a card for your needs. And so uh, number one, I, I'm pointing to the new card, and the new card gives you the option to create from existing templates or use a blank slate for those more advanced operations. And then you'll also see uh, number two, the host app. So what are we targeting for adaptive card? I said you write once and you can redistribute it. Um, that redistribution does mean that you have to select the host app inside of this designer so it, it understands how to do it. But more importantly, you get to see how it will render, which is excellent. Uh, I mentioned the schema. Uh, there's a target schema that you will build uh, your your card in and as uh, that adaptive card schema iterates and, and gets to higher versions your functionality may need a specific version to work and so you specify it here um, if we look at uh, section number four we start to see the uh, the card this is our canvas that we will develop in and these are the elements that we will be able to drag and drop over and physically arranged to have the look and feel that we're going for. And then as we look at uh, uh, number six down here, we get to see the, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I skipped over number five, uh, the, the, the card structure. And we see the, the adaptive card, we see the elements, we see everything configured in, and then the properties that are associated with, the, with each element. So you'll notice that I've got text block, and you see dollar sign title listed. And then these are all of the properties. There's quite a few that scroll off the page. 
that we can configure for that particular element. And in each element type has a different set of properties that can configure. And finally, uh, or not finally, but uh, the, the, the card payload editor and the sample data editor. Um, this is the, the output from the adaptive cards designer where we have built things. And this is all of that JSON code that is being uh, built for us as we uh, add elements and configure them. And then finally, uh, up at seven, uh, we have two buttons that are uh, incredibly important. One is the preview mode, which will take it out of this development mode and uh, give you an idea of how it will operate, the type of data that it will return uh, if it is ha has a, a, an action that does that. And finally, the copy the payload. So it'll take all of that, that JSON code and allow us to uh, uh, put that into things like uh, Power Automate to deliver that adaptive card over to Teams. Right. It's the JSON is technical. The designer is uh, much easier to do. So uh, less talk and more action. Uh, what we're going to do in, in this these demos is we're going to uh, create a team, create a list. We're going to build a flow. We're going to build some a couple of adaptive cards and uh, and kind of go from there. So please, uh, as I'm going through, if you have questions, uh, I am have the meeting chat open. I'm happy to answer uh, as I can. Otherwise, um, feel free to come off of mute. So I'm going to stop sharing the slide deck. And I'm going to share now my screen for Teams. So just bear with me while I get uh, a couple things sorted out. I don't, I've only got one screen, so I just want to make sure that uh, I can see the chat, I can see my notes and everything else. <clears throat> so here we go. We're going to start by uh, setting up the demo and we're going to create a team. Uh, we'll do it from scratch and it'll be a private and we'll just call this team demo. Click create, let that happen. You don't have to create all of these new assets. You probably have them in existence and you just want to bring the, the elements here. But for the purposes of what I'm doing, um, I'm going to be creating everything new. Uh, let's get a, a wiki. No one uses the wiki. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is create a list. The data in the list will serve as the information that we convey in the adaptive card and give us some um, anchor points for our Power Automate flow. So I'm going to add lists and we'll save that and that will show up as a new tab and that will allow us to import an existing list or create a new list. We're gonna create a new one and this will be from blank. And we're going to call this one Adaptive Cards. My favorite SharePoint teal green and click create. Right, so our new empty list is in our team. Uh, we'll utilize the title column and we'll start adding some new columns. We're gonna need certain types of uh, column information to make um, the demos work. So the first thing that uh, we will need is a person column, someone who we, we can send the adaptive card to. So we'll simply call this one owner. Yeah, we'll show the profile picture. Easy enough. The next thing that we want to do is to create a, a date that we can anchor our workflow to. So in our second demo, what we're going to do is send a reminder in advance of that due date coming up. So we'll simply call this due date. Uh, it'll be a date time. We'll click save, add that column. And now we're going to create a choice column and this will be called status. And so we've got like the basic information that you probably have in your, your list or your other tracking uh, uh, apps and services that you might use. And we've got um, a thing, the title, we've got someone responsible, the owner, we have a, a date that uh, the thing is due and a status to indicate where it is in its, its life cycle. 
And so we'll have uh, three simple choices. Uh, it's either new, it's completed, or it is in progress. Say the default value is new. This is our basic list. And with this, we have enough um, data to trigger our workflows. So I'm going to create a new entry, and this is just made up information. So it's going to be our Microsoft 365 E5 license upgrade. And pretend that this is a project or this is an issue or something that you are tracking uh, progress towards. Uh, the owner will be myself. And the due date will be seven days from now. And I'll save it. Right, we have our data. Now we can build an adaptive card that will deliver this information to the user without having to go to the, the team or the list or wherever it might be. Um, again, your list may not be in the team or in the team's chat where your users are, but for the purposes of this example, everything's in one container, but imagine it's distributed. And so the value of pushing the information to them is much higher. So we talked about the adaptive cards designer and, and here it is in, in real time. And the first thing that we, we talked about was the new card. And when you click new card, you're presented with all of these options or these examples for you to leverage. Uh, you can see that uh, some are, uh, you know, mid complexity. We have images, buttons, uh, data, almost like a table. Uh, you have things that will take input. You know, here's something that sounds like it's a, it seems to be a calendar reminder. Ones that become more visually um, appealing looks like. Uh, flight status information, a user input form, um, sporting events, you know, it. as you see, as you scroll through the examples, you start to get the, a sense for the, uh, um, the complexity uh, or the, the, the advanced functionality that you can create. Uh, this, this expense ex, uh, approval, you know, uh, exporting to PDF functionality, links, dynamic data quite a bit, or you can just go with blank. Um, it's been my practice uh, to use the good work that others have done. And so uh, for the purposes of this demo, I quite like the uh, restaurant re review card, excuse me. And I'm going to leverage this information, this framework to uh, build the user interface that I think my users would want and to convey the information that's important to me. So the first thing that I want to do after I've selected my sample card is to change the host app. And here we see we have Outlook. You notice how it changes. It's a different style layout. We could go to Viva Connections. We could go to Cortana. Uh, there's a bot framework. And the one that we'll be working with is Teams. This is the Teams light version. This is the Teams dark version. The functionality is the same. The difference is just how you how it's going to look. Uh, you don't have to make any changes that I'm aware of to make that work. So I'm going to choose Teams light just because it, it's easier on my eyes. And then I'll come over to the target version. Um, I talked about this quite a, quite a bit before, but you know we started at version 1.0. Now we're up to 1.5. Um, but when I use 1.5, it's not going to render in Teams just yet. Teams has to support it. And so a uh, safe bet for me is always version 1.3, and that, that'll change. So again, we have our card elements on the left, and we have our card. And we can drag things around to uh, build out the card as we see fit. And then we have the card structure where we can uh, identify the elements. So in this case, I've selected the column set, and then I can adjust the different properties that exist here. I can adjust the, the, uh, the, the more information button and see the options that are available there. Uh, again, uh, on the bottom is the card payload, and this is all of the, uh, the JSON code plus 
the sample data that they've provided to make this work in a dynamic way. So let's get started and customizing it. So uh, what I want to do is uh, start changing the look and feel. I'm not worried about dynamic data just yet, but I'm going to start creating placeholders. Um, so uh, I've selected the first entry and I want to leverage this uh, item and change the text. It's uh, It's got this uh, uh, pre-existing information here and I just want this to say list reminder. This is going to be static text for me. Uh, I've overwritten that. I'm looking at the element properties to see if there's anything that I need to worry about. And you'll notice that I have um, layout options. I could uh, uh, change the horizontal alignment to center or left or right, whatever I see fit, but I'm just going to stick with left. There's, there's not much gained, in my opinion, to, to overthink this stuff. Uh, I just want a consistent clean style that won't overwhelm my users. I have the ability to change font type, size, the weighting. These are good options, you know, like lighter, default, bolder, you know, things that make sense to you. Colors, and the colors are interesting because it's not going to be, you know, typical colors either by code or by name. It's by what they're intended. Uh, do I want to send a dark text? Do I want to make it light? You can't see it on the screen. So I want to accent it so it becomes like on my screen a purplish color good you know for green warning yellow attention red so this comes quite handy when you need to convey a message so I quite like this so I'll just set this to the default and then subtle and I can say true and you'll notice that the text uh, becomes light or false and we'll just keep that the truth okay uh, now this large this large text, this is going to be dynamic and it's going to come from our list. So it, right now it reads malt and wine, but what I wanted to do is to represent the values that we have in the title column. So I'm going to come in, I've selected the name, and right now it has a placeholder and I'm going to put in the name of my column and I'm using the add symbol. It has no programmatic functionality. It can't do anything in Power Automate. It's a placeholder to let me know that I am replacing this value with the dynamic data that we're getting in lists. And then I'm going to go through and make sure that there's no other choices or options in the layout or the style that I want to set. So far, so good. OK, uh, we have this. Uh, star rating and i'm going to use this text as well and uh, there's a option here show on, only show when this uh, variable is met and i'm not worried about that i don't need that for my uh, uh, the purposes of my card but what i do want it to say is the status and the status is coming again from our list and it's going to be dynamic right now it's new so i want to convey the item through my adaptive card and its current state to the user for them to take action. So the status, I'll change that to current status. Then I'm going to do another at value. And again, it doesn't mean anything. It's a placeholder for me to edit after the fact. You can get a sense by all this JSON code, like I'm going to have to at some point connect the list data through Power Automate. And this is my visual cue to see that. OK, uh, I'm going through and I'm checking out the element properties to make sure that there's nothing that I need to update or I want to configure for style. And I'm OK with that. The example card came with the uh, multiple star ratings, and I don't need the second one, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then I have this large text block, and I'm going to use that to create a dynamic message and the message is going to be a reminder i'm going to use dynamic data title static text uh, should it match to internal sharepoint list columns name for what i'm doing it doesn't matter i'm because you have to replace these values with what's in the list. So I'll I'll show you 
in the next step. So you have to do uh, essentially a copy operation from adaptive cards into Power Automate, and then you have to replace these values where I've been designating them like at title or at status. Then we will put the Power Automate uh, SharePoint attributes in, and we'll see that in a second. Great question, thank you. Uh, so this this reminder message is uh, part static and part dynamic. So reminder, dynamic data, title is uh, due on, and then I'm going to say at due date. Again, this is just a placeholder for me. Click on the more information button see the list item. OK, so far so good. Uh, I don't need this very large image. I'm going to use an image, but I don't want this one, so I'm going to remove it. I've got this empty column over here. I'm going to get rid of this as well. And so I have a very basic card, but I do want to add my own image. Perhaps this is my corporate logo or the, the logo that I use for the solution that um, you're leveraging with the, the cards. So I'm going to add a column set to the existing card. I'll drag it over and drop it in. Um, you'll see that there is an add column option. So I'm going to click that to add two columns and I'll have the title in one and my image in another. So I'm going to take the title element drag it into my empty column. And I'm going to move the list reminder to the top again. No, not there, up higher. So I got the empty column. Now I'm going to put in my own image. Um, so I've selected the empty column. Now I'm going to drag an image onto here. OK, so there's my empty image. And so I look to my element properties, and I'm going to paste in uh, image URL that I'm aware of. And then the image shows up. So you know, it's it's too big. I don't like it like this. So I'm going to change the size. And I'll make it uh, medium. So it's a little more reasonable, but it's still like too wide. And so I want to adjust that. And this can be tricky because you have all of these elements that kind of all look the same, but what we want to do is to highlight the column set and find the size. And more often than not, I screw this up. Yeah. And today's the day that I can't find it again. Column set two. Here it is. Height. Nope. Son of a gun. This literally always height, size. This happens all the time. It's just one of those obscure options. Oh, you're killing me. I have to set a size to pixelate it, and I can never remember. Pixels. Ugh, wrong one. Why does that always happen? Sorry, folks, this is the last thing you want to see is me fumbling around with this. I, I feel like I'm close. That's it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What a pain in the butt. Right. So we have an image that's a little more well balanced. I apologize for my fumbling there. Um, imagine that this is uh, uh, from your um, solution that you've built. Um, so you give it a nice title. So solution name, in my case, it's just this reminder my solution or corporate logo in a manageable size, the title from our data source the current status, a reminder to take action, and then the option to um, uh, jump back into the data to see details. So I've taken this 
the the small snippets of data, and I, I'm actually converting this into information that our users can use. So I'm going to change this to URL as another reminder for me to uh, remove this later. Okay, so I talked about uh, speak. This is for our accessibility uh, action. So I'm going to copy the reminder message and I'm going to come into the card and I'm going to replace the sample data with my dynamic string. This way I'm giving equal treatment, whether you're uh, uh, visually uh, able to see the card or rely on uh, an accessibility tool. So next option, let's click the preview button. So our card you know, looks pretty much the same. I'm going to click more info to see what I get in return. And it says you're going to open the URL with this at URL value. And we're going to replace, replace that, excuse me. So at this point, we've designed our basic card and now we need to do something with it. So I'm going to go back to Teams into my list and I'm going to open this up in SharePoint because there are some actions that you, you just can't do in Teams with SharePoint just yet. I'm sure it's coming, but it's not here today. Um, so reminder, uh, each team sits on a SharePoint site, a list sits on a site essentially as well. So I come here to get the name because I'm going to need it for our Power Automate build. So uh, to get into Power Automate from SharePoint, I'm going to click the integrate button. I'm going to go to Power Automate and I'm going to see my flows. I'm going to click new flow and I'm going to create a scheduled cloud flow. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to have a daily run. Check our list, see if something is due. And then send out a message. All right, so we'll call this a uh, demo adaptive. We'll set the reoccurrence to run every day. And we'll click create. Our reoccurrence is set. And the first thing that we need to do is to create a, a reminder date. So recall that we're running this every day. So we're going to say um, any list item that is due in seven days. Tell me if it's there, and if it's there, let's send out the adaptive card. So to do that, I'm going to need a variable. And I'm going to initialize a variable. And I'm going to call this var date. This will be a string variable. And its value is going to be a power automate expression. So I'm going to do add days. Action to today's date, which is called UTC now, seven days. So today plus seven days is the date that my variable will store. And I'm going to format my variable to year, month, day. Okay, uh, I'm going to save. I'm going to test. And I want to test just to get the date back to confirm that I have this date inside of my list. So March 11th, March 11th. So my next actions will be to get all of the data from my adaptive cards list where the due date is set for this day. So let's go back into Power Automate and let's add another action. And this time we're going to go to SharePoint and get all of the items in the list where this condition is met. So I'm using SharePoint, then get items. I need my SharePoint site address. And I'm going to specify that as a custom value because it's not in my existing list. And I'll paste it in. Power Automate has been acting funny lately for me, and I get this red message saying that 
it can't find the site, but the fact that it found the list card is an indicator that it does in fact find it. Um, so let's save that to see if that clears that message. Thank you, it's fine. So that is saved, yes. Uh, this warning is for my action get item saying we might be best suited to use an OData filter, and it's absolutely right. So an OData filter is going to be a query string or query expression that will uh, restrict the the columns or the, the 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 rows returned based on column values. So what we're going to do is use the due date column. And we'll say, give me all rows where due date is equal to, or EQ, two single quotes. And then I'm going to put in our var date variable. Now, let me zoom in so you can see that because the single quotes are important. The due date column, well, I know it's due date, but there are some cases when you might have different values. So you could create a column, depending how you create the column, it could be due space date, and that might have a different internal storage name. And if it does, then you're going to have to retrieve that. And an easy way of doing that is to go into your list, into the settings. This is the, the back end of the list. Select the column that you're interested in and select it, and you'll notice that in the URL, the field name is due date. Um, sometimes it can look like uh, underscore x0 200, 200 underscore, and that is depending how the column was created and how old the list is, this is how it will show. This is the internal name, and the internal name is important for us when we're working with Power Automate and lists. Modern list, modern column creation, I don't really have to worry about that. So that's good. So this means <clears throat> we are going to get all of the rows from the list where the due date is equal to our uh, variable, which is today's date plus seven days. And you can change that seven days to whatever suits your needs. Great, next step, we're going to call Teams and we're going to send an adaptive cart. We are going to post an adaptive card in the chat or channel. Most of the uh, uh, adaptive cards that I send in my professional work go to the user in chat. That way I'm not spamming a Teams channel. But that's my business requirement. Your business requirement might be different. And for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to have them go into that channel just to make it simple. So I'm going to post as the Flowbot. I'm going to post in a channel. I'm going to provide the team ID. If you have more advanced or dynamic uh, requirements where you need this to be dynamic, you can definitely do that with more advanced Power Automate flat, uh, patterns. The channel will be general. And now we have to put in our adaptive cart. So I go back to the designer, uh, take a quick look to make sure everything's right. Uh, I go to preview mode again. It's going to do the URL and I got my schema. My host app is correct. Copy the payload. It's in my memory. And then I'm going to paste it in. And you see that you know there's there's quite a bit of code for this simple card. And so now we come back to why I was putting the the, the at symbol and the column name. Uh, so now I need to replace those values. Um, before I do that, you'll notice that the adaptive card um, is sitting in in its current state. It's it's not in a loop but the data that's coming out of the list will be in, in an array. So this is going to be converted uh, to an array at one point. So I'm going to select my first at value, which is title. And I'll scroll down a bit. And I'm going to replace it with the title from the get items. And you'll notice that it throws it in a loop. 
Great. So now it's just a, a replacement exercise. Due date, and I'm going to scroll down. Here's the title again. Oop, that would be at the top. Here's the status. So we'll look for the status value. Uh, here's our text reminder title again. And so you're able to leverage most of the data in a list just by uh, doing the get items. And I say most because if you have columns, especially choice columns, where uh, you allow multi-select, this gets much more complicated. Um, and you can uh, learn more about the, those types of values on my blog site, if you like, at normyoung.ca. So that at URL I'm replacing with the link to item. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a flow checker. Everything's happy there, save it, and then we'll test. If all goes well, we should get an adaptive card for our test row that we created in the list. I was just looking through to make sure that I didn't mess up any of the at value replacements for my placeholder text. Because debugging an adaptive card can be a, a patience testing exercise. So I'll run this and I'll use this as an opportunity to get a drink of water. Good news, our flow ran successfully. I'm going to go to my uh, uh, my Teams tab and go to Posts, and there it is. Here's our adaptive card for our Microsoft 365 E5 license upgrade. I see the status, and I got a reminder saying, take action before this thing is due. And this is one of the great things that we can do with automation. I can click More Information, and I'm brought to that list item, and I can take action. This is awesome. We're able to do uh, uh, bring the work to where our people are, are working. So I'm going to edit my flow. Now we're going to step up the complexity on this quite a bit. As I'm getting ready, are there any questions about what we've done so far? Uh, good, I've taken my uh, updated payload from Power Automate and put it back into the designer. And what I'm going to do now is create the same, a similar card, but with a uh, uh, the ability for the user to set the status dynamically. So um, I'll add a, whoops, I'm in preview mode. Take that off. I'm going to add a choice set. And this is going to be a drop down menu box. And so I have to be very particular on how I'm doing this. I need an ID to identify where this data is coming from. So I'm going to call it user choice. The placeholder text, this is just the uh, uh, the visual cue that my users will get. I'll say set the status. And now I'm going to find some choice values that my users can do. And you'll notice that these will look exactly like what is in our list for the status uh, choice values. New choice for completed. So very important that I get user choice selected as the ID. So when I add another action button here, it knows where that data is coming from. I've got my choices set. And now I'm going to select my card and you'll notice that the add the action uh, option shows. I'm going to add the action and I'm going to do an action submit. I'll select this button and I'm going to change the title to update, and here's the, the thing that we must pay special attention to is the data that it's going to return. We define this, so I'm going to call this my user action. And say that they have updated or click the button. So oh, this is super important. You have to check 
to make sure it's here. Action, submit, update, update. It doesn't look completed yet. So let's do preview. So I get my values and I click in progress and I want to click update. So this is what it's sending back to Power Automate. The action was executed. Uh, the submitted data is user action. We've updated and we've changed our choice to in progress. OK, let's come out of preview mode. Take another look just to make sure. And this is this is key. Can't do anything on our next flow unless we're getting data back. Great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's copy the card payload. Let's go back into Power Automate and let's delete our card that we just created and we'll create a new one. Teams, uh, adaptive card. This time we're going to post an adaptive card and wait for the user to respond. That's the update button. Uh, we'll post in the channel. Give that a second. We'll give it the team. Demo, we'll give it the channel, general, and we will paste in our adaptive card. Because we copied the previous created card, excuse me, our dynamic uh, list values are there, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, great. We'll have a new card, it'll prompt for something, but what do we do with it? We're going to have to assess all of the variables that or the data that comes back. So we're going to use a switch control. And we need to get the data from this adaptive card. So if this was a more mature offering for, for teams, I would have variable or dynamic content that I could extract, but I don't have it. So what we have to do is use an expression to choose our value. And we're going to use the output from the command. And just to save time, I'm going to paste it in the expression and I'll explain what it's doing. Output from our card. The card name is the same, but you'll notice that I've had to put underscores in. You can't have spaces in Power Automate expressions. Uh, and then we're going to look at the body from the output. And we're going to look at the data. Remember, that's what we're returning inside of our adaptive card data and then we're going to look at the user choice and the user choice uh, is the value that we've designated in i'll click ok to that this can be tricky and this one's a this is a hard one to debug and i'll say are you new is the value new because that's something that we could do if it is let's update our item in sharepoint i need to get my site url again And we're going to find our adaptive cards list. We have to identify the item that we're working in. So we'll use the ID. Title is a required column. So we always have to specify title, but status is static. So in this case, I'm looking at new. So I'm going to set it as new. Right, no problem. Let's do it again now, but this time for in progress. Let's add another update item. custom value. Um, inside of Power Automate, you have the ability to copy actions to the clipboard, which would save lots of time. But the switch function does not allow you to do that. So this is why we have to unfortunately rekey all this information in. So ID is required, title is required, status value. So in progress, status value, I'm setting it to in progress. One more, completed. Add an action, update. Quite repetitive. I have a flow pattern uh, that follows this uh, same uh, build, but there are um, eight or so different statuses. So if you can imagine having 
to retype all of this in or configure this uh, with every uh, uh, every uh, permutation that comes out of the list. It, it's, it was quite tedious to do. Um, complete. Great. Uh, let's save. And if all goes well, so what's going to happen is we're going to get the adaptive card again for our SharePoint list item. It's going to say uh, you can click the link to view the item or you can set the status. So we're going to set the status. It's going to return that data from the adaptive card to Power Automate. And with our um, switch statement, uh, we're going to compare it in these case uh, actions to say, are you new, in progress, completed? If you're in progress, change the value to in progress. If you're completed, set the value to completed. The part that is really tricky in all of this is the, the switch on value. And this is the value I pasted in. Um, you don't get this dynamic uh, data from Teams actions just yet, but hopefully in the future it will, because if there's a mistake, it's probably in the text which comes from the adaptive card so my fingers are crossed i hope yours are as well and i'm going to save and test my flow it is running so if all goes well there's no error and what we're getting is that the card has been submitted to the user and now it's waiting for the response so we're going to come over to our team here's our card and I'm going to set the status. Let me just check the value that we have right now. Right now, it is set to new. So let's call this one complete. And I'm going to click the update button. The adaptive card is processing, sending the data, and we get a response. Oh, my crossing our fingers has paid off. We see that. Uh, the switch statement has been completed. Case one, new. Case two, uh, in progress. Case three was completed. You'll notice that there's a green checkbox. We've updated the item. And if I come back into my list and do a refresh, it's been set complete. That worked out quite well and my only struggle was setting that stupid image size so i hope that you can see what is possible when you take um, these adaptive cards and these amazing samples that others have put together and this is what's just on the design. Like if you go to GitHub and look at the adaptive card samples, they're like, it's amazing what people are putting together. And you combine the ability to send information, not data, to your users from things like a Microsoft list using tools like Power Automate into Microsoft Teams, which is becoming more and more where people spend all of the time. You've really created a solution platform for these situations where you know you don't have an app for that. So let me stop the demos, share the slide deck. Um, and again, open up the uh, the floor to say, uh, is there is there anything you want to to ask me about or? Uh, questions about what we did. I'm, I'm happy to answer it in the time that we have. Um, also, uh, thank you for attending. I know when these uh, uh, these virtual conferences are happening, there's so many options, and you're doing it uh, probably during your workday uh, when you have a million things to do. So uh, I, I truly appreciate your time in attending. Um, if you like um, to continue this conversation, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I have a blog where I try and cover off these patterns. And um, 
I'm not a developer. I'm a data guy that's using the collaboration tools that I have at hand to, to build solutions that I know work for my users. Um, so I hope that you can see the, the potential in all of this. And uh, thanks again.